It is a great, great honor um, to be recognized in this way by the Savannah College of Art Design and the Savannah Film Festival, particularly because of the great imagination, inspiration, and innovation that they exhibit year after year. Now, what you're about to see is different. <laughs> We all endeavored to create another world, another world that we hope you'll enjoy. So thank you all for coming. It means so much to me. And I look forward to um, hearing from you afterwards in Q&A. Can you tell us a little bit about the development of the screenplay? And, and uh, it's, it's a bold, wonderful decision, and it's, it really transports us to a, a, another place in the way that only films can. Um, well, can you tell us a little bit about the decision to make this particular film? Well, when I was writing Precious, I really believed in it, but I didn't think anyone would, would see it. Not that I didn't think it was worthy of being seen, I just, there's a checklist of what's often considered commercial, and, and Precious has everything that is not on that list. So, um, I just kept writing. So I wrote the first draft of Island Daisy before Precious came out. So my whole philosophy was always just to keep working, keep working, keep working. And uh, this was the thing that was I was most passionate about, the thing that was most ready to go. And uh, I just went right into it. I remember one day on the set, Saoirse who plays Daisy. <laughs> she said, about halfway through shooting, much to her credit, she said, I didn't know you won that thing. <laughs> so she makes her decisions based just on the material, as is Jim and uh, others in the cast. So. Jim, how did you come on board with the production? And can you talk a little bit about finding the character and, and working with Jeffrey uh, in order to do so? I don't remember how I got to me. Yeah, it's good, but I read the scripts. <laughs> Basically, I, usually you, you get scripts and you read about a quarter of them and you put them down and you rub your head and you go, oh my God, you know, we read this 4,000 times. And I'm reading this and I just get to read the page and like, what the f? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I just kept going and going and going and, uh, you know, and it stuck in my mind. And um, I, again, I don't know, but I, I guess I, I had to find you or something after, I don't know how it exactly happened, but it was a while ago, it was a couple of years ago. And uh, then, you know, working with them, I, there were times when I had to, I, you know, I tried to be as organic as possible, and there are times when he asked me to do things that were a little odd, like camera-wise and visual-wise, and I would grumble a little bit. And then I told him, I saw the film, and I said, I get it, I'm sorry, I understand. Um, you know, you were right, and uh, you know, he's, he's a visionary. So obviously, he marches to his own drum, and that's so refreshing. You must take a tremendous amount of trust as an actor. I didn't trust him at all. Really. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was, he, was, he was unbelievable, he really was. And he has such a vision of the thing, and it's so um, certain in his mind that you have to, you know, you have to go with it. But, you know, I think perhaps we're probably going to yeah, it's not like we were fighting. Um, no, and uh, the other thing is, sometimes it's a good thing. I think when you have a shoot where everything goes perfectly smoothly, even though a lot of things didn't go well for us, it just doesn't come out well. And he's passionate and specific, as am I. And that's a good energy, because we ask each other questions, and you come up with this, hopefully, uh, a better answer than either of you would come up with on your own. So uh, you know, it, it was remarkable. And he was so specific and so thorough in preparing. Um, it's amazing. You know, a lot of times you look at dailies, it's 
sometimes it doesn't feel good. Sometimes it requires the edit to really click and pop. But his dailies are remarkable. And every single take is usable. It uh, was really amazing. And I think it, it uh, had, a, had a profound effect on the rest of the cast. They were all great actors in their own right. Well, for so many years, I was trying to get into the industry, and I just kept writing, 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 and I did, took odd jobs, and made a lot of short films. So over that time, uh, a lot of things build up, and a lot of things you want to do, and you finally get a chance. Sometimes you just want to do as much as you can, and you never know how many films you get to make, so you also want to make them with, with no regrets if you can. And um, I'm fascinated by so many different genres. And this, I think, you know, sort of mixes a few. And I love funny stuff. And a lot of people, some people were surprised on panels after Precious. But the Precious, maybe not exactly the first time you watch it. But there's some nervous laughter. And maybe not the second time, but I think it's funny. And I, I love funny stuff, because funny makes it bearable. You look at Rachel Bullard, Lynn Gary, Glenn Ross. Those, to me, are two of the funniest films ever made. Just not the first five times you watch them. <laughs> but that's what makes them bearable. And, uh, you know, I think movies are oftentimes are life condensed. So you try to pack in you know, joy and the pain the peaks and the valleys. And, uh, you know, when you, when you make a movie, if someone gives you something, you can never give them back. And that's their time. So, whether the movie works or not, is go all out. And, uh, so that's what I did. Now, I was never a teenage hit girl, but this works more like a fable, you know? There are ideas of uh, forgiveness and family and um, friendship and materialism and things like that, so, yeah. I don't know why people are out of time, but please uh, well, uh, join me in uh, thanking our, our guests.